Hi guys, it's a Sunday morning and um, I'm going to do a uh, watercolor video because someone asked me last uh, yesterday in the comments. Of course I have my little cup of coffee, yes. So um, some people are getting started with watercolor and I'm going to do a couple of tips that will help you along the way. Now. First off um, is a tip. I'm going to be using the real watercolor for that. This is um, a tin that I've had for, well, I, I'm, I guess I mentioned that before. This is, uh, I think, over 30 years old. So uh, first off, I don't do much watercolor. But second is that, you know, it goes a long way. One of those half pans. That's what they call these little things that you pop in there. They're half pans. And this is the size. Then uh, you can get a full pan, which is uh, a double. And that's it. Or you buy tubes, tubes of uh, watercolor. You can do that too. But then, of course, if you're going for um, the larger quantities, they're really, really expensive. And... Maybe you don't, just don't want to do that. So uh, half pans are a great way to uh, build up a palette. And um, you can uh, decide which colors you want. Um, I'm not saying this is the perfect match because um, you'll probably have different ideas about the palettes you, uh, you would like to use. Uh, I'm going to uh, show you a little bit. You wet the, uh, the pan. You put in a little bit of water, you let it sit there for a little bit. And I'll have to use the back of this because I want to keep the other. And then uh, what you can do over here, you can, uh, you can mix your own if you want a different color. So like say add a little bit of this, it'll turn nice and light, but of course if you add uh, this white you'll also be making it more opaque so you have to watch out for that then of course you can uh, wet wet with just water you can make these effects as you can see it's flowing down and sort of merging into the uh, bottom I'll show you that a little bit later with a different color that shows it better but once it's dry you can see how they how how it merges together so you make uh, washes okay let's start in the beginning first of all when you're gonna start your watercolors you won't know what to, to make because you're thinking shall I do a landscape shall I do a portrait what can I do well I'll give you a little idea of something really easy to start with and that's these leaves now all you have to do is get a this is this I've had this brush for I don't know how long this is really a really old brush you can see it by the way it's worn down but I've used this one so long and this is one of my favorite brushes I'm not sure if it still has a good point we'll see usually I put spit on it and let it dry because spit will dry up a little bit more hard and keep all the bristles together but we'll see so we take a little bit of water this time I'm going to use this leaf color and put in a little bit of the other color okay we'll see how that works out now uh, before I start painting I'll give you another tip these I did freehand I just put four leaves on there and I'm gonna you know do a light blue background I'm gonna do the leaves and then I'm gonna use my metallic uh, watercolor for these things in the middle that you know it's just purely uh, because I like the shape of it it's not representing a real leaf because they won't have that on it well maybe some do but <laughs> most of them don't but I'll give you a tip now when you start good thing to do is think about your composition because this I did freehand and if you want to do it right you first divide up the page make sure they're all centered and as you can see that is uh, just a little bit more I don't know it's 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 more pleasing to the eye and uh, than this is but of course you can always frame this let me see if I got a big frame here Nah, I don't think so I think this one's too big yeah but you could frame it 
and it will make a nice little painting. So we'll just go with that. But if you're going to do something like this, uh, I, I really um, would say, you know, divide up your paper and make sure everything's in the right place so that it is more pleasing to the eye. So get the little brush here and we're going to do uh, with a, a nice wash. So we're going to go and this is where you keep uh, in the lines. Now, if you're someone that says, well, I'm, my hands tremble a little bit, doesn't work, you can get masking fluid and you could mask the outline and you could mask the thing in the middle. But for because I'm going to use metallic uh, metallic paint, it, it's not really important if I go over this, uh, this in the middle. So I'll just do that. It just makes it a little bit faster. And when you, you, of course you have to get used to your brush. As you can see, I'm doing this side a little faster because I know what my brush does, but it's a good thing to practice and see everything that your brush can do. Now, while the paint is uh, still moist, I pick up a little bit more and I'm this time I'm going a little bit darker. I'll give it a little bit more water, as you can see here. And then I'm just going to touch the paper. I'm not going to be brushing, I'm just touching. And because it's all uh, damp, it's going to spread all by itself. And that's where you get those highlights, low lights, shadows. That's really all there is to it. It's really very, uh, very easy to do. Now I'm going to do the next one. Keep it nicely in the lines. Well, most of it. And of course, when you're finished, you can always decide if you want to outline it with uh, a black marker. There, You have to be careful. You have to use markers that are uh, waterproof. Because other way, otherwise the it'll just merge together you don't want that and you'll never be able to um, do a touch up because once a little bit of water touches those markers they will flow okay now a little bit more of that dark I do think um, I, I see pigments sort of building together that's not a good thing maybe I should just uh, buy some new new paints but like I said I'm gonna be making my own paints and uh, the first reason I'm doing the paints is because I want good metallic paints and the second uh, reason would be um, because I've bought so many of those that they're you know it's starting to get a little bit uh, <laughs> expensive <laughs> with all the the paints I buy and I can't use because they just do nothing I'll show you in a bit Okay, that's the uh, highlight bit. I have to get some uh, clean water here because I think I have, this is from yesterday, I think there's uh, ox gall in there. I really don't want that. So I'm cleaning off my little cup. And there we go, that's fresh water. Okay, now, as you can see here, I'm not, yeah, you can see it. It's bleeding and it's stopping and it's making sort of a, um, a line. Some people really like that because that's sort of an effect uh, that, that goes with watercolor. But if you don't like it, you can always pick up paint. As you can see here, now it's gone. So you do that with a, a clean brush. I, I, I do this to the, the top, so I, I take off the excess water. And then you can just pick up paint if you want to. So that's another little tip. Now we're going to go to the uh, the top ones because these have to dry before I go further with it. And you could you could really go you could do it a, a much different. I'll show you a different technique. Getting a little water in my palette here. I'm wetting the other color. Now this is a lot of paint, and some colors are opaque, like I already told you. And the, uh, that turquoise color, that's one of them. 
and this is really loading up the brush with a lot of paint a lot of moisture and we're giving it a little bit more and I want some more blue this is going to be a sort of a bluish greenish leaf looks a little bit like a eucalyptus leaf and if you were to spread this out with a clean brush you'll see that it lightens up so you'll have the darker on this side the lighter on the other side but that's all all you have to do is to get this uh, effect is just clean your brush take off the excess water there you go that's number two so this is a sort of a um, one where it has two colors in it then we're gonna go maybe do a little bit of a I have some magenta on here and eh, that's an ugly color but we'll do it anyway see this is bordering on olive I like this this is uh, what I usually go for because everyone has a preference in how the uh, colors should mix together I'll give it a little bit more of that darker color might be good with the gold that I'm going to be putting on it so we'll see and keep in the lines of course there you go now we're going to take a little bit of real magenta and we're going to wet that a little bit just to make it a little bit more 3D looking there you go okay that's it now we're gonna let that dry I'll help it along with a hair dryer and I'll be right back okay everything's dried and uh, I'll show you well this is just a test piece anyway so uh, I can do it on here but what I normally do is take this nice little blue of course I'd give it a little bit more blue and yeah, maybe even more than that and that's what I do with the uh, with the background so I would just paint that give it a little wash but I do the whole background and then that would be ready let that dry for now now I'll show you what I meant with the watercolors because I bought these these are um, watercolor this is silver and these are from the same um, brand this is the gold and this is the bronze and this is my own made metallic so it's totally dry as you can see I can rub my finger over it it's uh it's in the state where I can I could package it and send it to you guys so we'll see how that works out later but first of all I'll show you the difference so I'm putting water on this one because that's how you activate your watercolors and we'll let that sink in for a bit I'll take another brush and I'll do the other color too I'll let that I'll let that sink in a little bit and then another brush let's see got that one that one I'll take this now I'll take a big now I'll take that one and we're gonna put a little a little bit of water on there to moisten that up see this one goes much faster that's what I like about my own made stuff okay clean brush give it a little twirl now I'm gonna line it down here now the color is pretty absolutely but there is absolutely no glitter in it so I don't know why they call it gold because it's not gold it's not giving us that beautiful and let's do the other one this one the bronze and I'm giving it a good rub so I'm really really getting uh, 
getting a lot of that stuff on my brush, loading it up as I would say, and then the color is nice, well not really, but it does give color, but it does not give that beautiful sparkly look that we're looking for when we say we're going to use metallics. Now this one is wet. I'm going to put it right ne next to, <laughs> that is such a difference, and I'm going to show you in a bit. I'm going to give you a close up. See how much, <laughs> this is my own, this is this is the, the one I bought. It is not shiny at all, it's just the color. And the one next to it, as you can see, that one is really metallic and shiny. And this one, the bronze, where's the bronze people? It's just like, I don't know, terracotta red or something. There is absolutely not one little shimmer in there. And when I look at my own, there's a lot of shimmer. Okay, so we're um, we're pretty much ready with that. These are are gonna go to my uh, well, maybe when I some I, I gave a lot of paint away to uh, a neighbor last week, the week before. I'm not sure. Uh, he's starting with acrylics, and I gave him the brand we do not discuss anymore. <laughs> yeah, Amsterdam acrylics. So there you go cleaning all my brushes and we're going to go, we're going to stay with the shiny metallic. Okay, then what I do is drop my gold on here and this is really, you know, you have to make sure that you do it well because you want that little round top you want that here too and there they're a little bit smaller and we're gonna give that one now of course you could um, do the the straight lines you could do that with one of those metallic markers you could but then yeah I don't know Th then you'd have to call it mixed media or something like that so and it's really really straight which doesn't give you a sense of that it was done by hand and there's something about it that I think you know it just doesn't look like art <laughs> I'm not sure how to explain it people but when you do straight lines with a, a marker it'll be more even and it'll be more like I don't know I just like it more when you do it by hand you know, there's always a slight little little bend in it, and it looks just so much prettier. So there you go. As you can see, it is really shiny. Nowhere near that one, the first one. See that? That's shiny. That's not shiny. So I don't know who this is, which brand, but Yexon. I think they should go back to the drawing board and do some more developing of their metallics, because those metallics just don't do it for me. So we're going to do a, the next one, and this is turning into a pretty long video. So first we give those little round things a little bit of paint, then we put a little bit more water on the, on the brush so we can do the, uh, the lines. You See, that's what I'm talking about. Sometimes they're thick, sometimes they're thin. But that just gives them the uh, the real look of handmade, hand-painted something. Otherwise, it's sort of like it's been printed or... Yeah, that's the word I was looking for. It looks more like it was printed. But there you go. It's nice and shiny. That's going to work really nice. But that's, um, that's a little uh, thing, a little project you could do if you're just starting off with uh, watercolor. Everyone can make one of these. I'll, uh, everyone can make a leaf and even a square one, which doesn't even exist, I don't think. I've never seen a square leaf. But um, all you have to do, you could even do uh, sort of one like this. 
that looks more like a leaf than the square one, but I like that. So you start here, go down, and there can be a little, you know, corner, I don't know what you call it, but a little slant in the line because it'll give you more of the idea of that it is a leaf. Then you put those things on. You go like that, you go like that, and you put them on. Now this is a project that if you were to do this, if you have a hair dryer that is, uh, you could make like, I don't know, I'd start with one because I think uh, every time you go further and further with it, it'll give you uh, more experience, more ideas of how to um, use the paint. I'll get a big brush this time. What's my biggest brush? This one. And we're going to give it... I'm going to put the blue. Oh no, that's a nice color blue. Let's see. And then a little bit more water. Both colors. There you go. You could do a wash first. Of course, you can outline this what with the uh, with the masking fluid. Then you can do the whole background first. Work on that. The bigger the brush, the the better you can do uh, big spaces of wash. That's just you know so much better. And if you're not having much luck with uh, with your acrylic uh, acrylic, your your I was gonna say aquarelle. We call it aquarelle. So not not so much watercolor. We call it aquarelle. And French do that too, I guess. So um, there you go. Now we're gonna give this more blue because. The higher you go in the air, the bluer it is. And of course you can make it all come down a little bit like that. Then if you think, oh, there's too much paint here, you can pick it up. There are just techniques that you pick up along the way. And uh, there's also, there's a, a Chinese or Japanese uh, gentleman on YouTube. He does a lot of videos with... Uh, I will, uh, oh no, I, I'm not allowed to link that. Uh, I can put that beneath the video. I'm not allowed to put a, you know, one of those stamp things in there where you click on it and you go to it if it's someone else's uh, channel because, um, well, that has to do with copyright something. I don't know. I just think it's nice if people share their channels. And uh, you can share mine anytime. I don't, I don't really mind. But it has to do with copyright. So here we have this nice light blue background. What you do have to do before you do the, the leaf is you wait for this to dry and then you do the leaf. Because if I were to do it right now, I will show you what happens. So I'm loading my green up and then I'm thinking, oh yes, I'm going to go there and do that. It's already bleeding. See that? That's going to happen. Now, this is something that you want in some pieces you make but in this where you want the blue background and the green leaves you don't want this happening because it's bleeding all over the place and you're not going to get rid of it and it's going to keep on doing it because the background is wet now while i'm looking at it i'm thinking oh, it might not be too bad <laughs> You know, it's just a, a personal choice, and you you can do whatever you want. But if you want to avoid this, you wait for the background to dry, then you do your leaf, and then you know you won't have this happening. Even here, see that? It's uh, down here. It's going into the background too. So you don't want to do that. That's one of the big mistakes that uh, beginning artists do when uh, when colors bleed together. So um, if you don't want it, use wait till something's dry, and then go again so guys i'm not sure if you can pick the yeah you can if you can't see that i don't everyone can see that so that's the uh, yak song that's my own and that's yak song so i'm going to make some uh, bronze too to see the difference you can see it here too how beautiful that is i think i have a future in paint making 
<laughs> I am so uh, that's that's just me because when I get to a new hobby, oh, someone said, I think you should go <laughs> you you should do uh, metal detecting because um, you're in Holland and there's so much uh, you know uh, culture there and. I th I thought well a little bit too late. I've been doing metal detecting I think about ten years, and I have one of the best metal detectors ever. I think I've told you this before, but maybe not not everyone knows this. It's a computerized metal detector. It was really really expensive when I, but that's just me. I go and research metal detectors. Then I go from one. Then I think nah that doesn't work. Then I go a little higher. I think yeah that's starting to look like it and then I go to the top of the range and that's this computerized metal detector that you know you you just down every year you download uh, the new software and you have a new metal detector that's even better and better and better and the one I bought this is the name if you want to check it out um, I have seen a lot of uh, people in England uh, wor work with them. It, it comes from f France, and uh, I don't think I've ever seen one in the USA because it might be pretty expensive to import. But this is the name of it, and the uh, the actual machine. Well, this is another reason why I went for this one. It, it is a lot more expensive, but it is lightweight. It weighs nothing because. The whole computer where normally on a metal detector is like this chunk of, you know, machinery. Now it's like a mobile phone. That's how big it is. Um, maybe I'll show it to you next week. If you really want to see it, I'll show it to you next week. My husband, uh, he, he thought, okay, here we go again, another hobby. But so I bought that thing and I took it home. And um, you don't even even have to read a, a manual because you just turn it on and you can go metal detecting. So I did that here in the backyard. And the minute I put it on the ground, it goes pew, pew, pew. And I'm thinking, wow, I think I got something. And I found a really old um, five cent piece, a really old one. And uh, my husband was sitting there and he thought, okay, that's beginner's luck. So I cleaned the, the, the coin and all that stuff. Then I started again. The minute I put it on the ground, there it goes, bam, bam, bam. And my husband is saying, are you kidding me? That's impossible. But that thing really, um, really finds coins. It does. And uh, I, anywhere I go, and uh, in here in Holland, we have a lot of um, corn fields. So around uh, end of October, begin November, they take all the corn off and then you can go and do some searching if you have permission that is. And I have always found money, always. Um, just uh, recently, about 100 meters from my house, I found a silver uh, 10 cent piece and that was really interesting. So I do metal detecting. So guys, thanks. And um, sorry for the chit chat at the end, but I thought I'd throw it in there because you guys always comment on my videos. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.